Now I have to confess, I had no idea that Formula One drivers were so good at foreign languages. It's actually quite mind-boggling. Check it out. <laughs> Now, if you didn't even know that F1 drivers were so good at languages, you're in for an absolute treat. They're fast, they're hilarious, and they're very, very, very competitive. So who is the best language learner of them all? Well, I've got 11 for you, and who's the guy singing? Ja, ich gehe davon aus, dass es im Prinzip äh, genauso bleiben wird. Es wird immer wieder zwischendurch einen leichten Regenguss geben, nichts schweres. There are two reasons I'm starting with Shumi, in spite of the tragedy. First, he's the king, and a lot of racers say he's the one who drove them to achieve their dream of getting into F1 in the first place. Second, we really like the way he learned Italian. If you don't know him, Michael Schumacher, massively popular ex-racer, seven-time world champion, tragically in a coma after a skiing accident. Success in any situation of life, or in most I know anyway, is about teamwork. Yourself, you do what you do. As a team, you'll be much stronger. And Formula One is a teamwork. Just down the road from the Fiorino track in Italy, where the Ferrari factory is, is a restaurant called Ristorante Montana. Back in the day, Schumacher used to hang out there with other Ferrari legends and engineers, and he built a special connection with the Italian chef, Rossella Giannini. He called her his Italian mum. And apparently she fed him a lot more than just tagliatelle al ragù. È molto difficile. È molto difficile perché questa cicchetto per me è molto difficile uh, perché come come Monte Carlo è molto tecnico. That makes three languages. Respect to you, man. And if you want to learn like he did, it's really not that hard. Just start hanging out in a restaurant where they speak to you in the language that you're learning. Works better than you might think. Now, a lot of people ask if Ferrari racers have to be fluent in Italian. If you want to find out the answer, keep watching. To what do you attribute this explosion of, of uh, popularity now in, in the States? I was going to say something serious, but I think ultimately it's probably my good looks. They call him the honey badger, and they say he seems quite cute and cuddly, but as soon as someone crosses his territory in a way he doesn't like, he turns into a bit of a savage. Is that true? I have no idea. Enjoy the butterflies. Daniel Ricciardo is an Australian driver from Perth, so of course he speaks English, but he's not Australian by blood, and there are lots of videos of him doing things like this. Enchanté, oh, enchanté. Which means he can speak French, right? Let's check. I hardly speak French, you know, so when I do say enchanté, people are like, oh wow, so sophisticated. And uh, all of a sudden my, <laughs> my IQ goes up, or well, my, my French IQ goes up. Look curieux. Look curieux. Look curieux. Daniel, if you're watching, I've got a book for you right here. Really good. His dad, Giuseppe, is actually Italian, as are his mum's parents, and he grew up with the big Sunday lunch get-togethers with all the Italian cousins, aunties, and uncles, and then he moved to Italy when he was a teenager to follow his dream. So I guess all things Italian come to him pretty naturally. Stronzo. Non è carino. Stronzo? No. no. Is it not a good word? No, no, really? no, 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 no. Okay, scores no. up. Clearly a cheeky guy who cracks people up, sometimes not on purpose, but all we want to know is can he speak Italian? Indy 500. Che paura. Si, okay, okay. Okay. Si. Sono 32 adesso. Forse troppo vecchio. Guys, if you love languages but you're just a beginner, don't let that stop you. Daniel certainly doesn't, and he's having a lot of fun in the process. The best advice I found from him is this. He said, you need to find your passion, then stick to your guns, and not let anyone tell you that you can't do it. That is a metaphor for life, if you ask me. Right, let's get a bit more horsepower behind that Italian. He lives in Milan and loves all things Italian, and he got this nickname when he won the 2020 Italian Grand Prix. But see if you can guess where Pierre Gasly is really from by his accent. Benissimo, e, e non mi piace quando uh, sento che non è perfetto. Um, ma adesso prendo um, un po' qual qualche lezione di, di italiano. Gasly, devi fare un favore a tutti i fan italiani. Parla italiano nelle interviste 
Eh, sì, qualche, vo- qualche volta provo, ma è ancora un po' difficile. He's been in Milan since 2019, then 2020 came and we all had to suddenly do that pick a new hobby at home thing. Pierre decided to take piano lessons and learn Italian. Any of you guys do that, pick a new language for lockdown? Gasly was actually born in France and three months later he chose his career. I mean, the first time he saw a French racing driver win a Formula One Grand Prix, he, he was three months old. I un petit cadeau de la part de Blizzard qui m'a envoyé le nouveau World of Warcraft classique, donc on va streamer ça demain pour qu'on puisse checker tout ça ensemble. When he was 13, he moved to a private school and got personal tutors too. They really start these races off young with go-karting and during championships the organization puts together classes for young drivers and that's how Pierre got a good start in modern languages. We were at the back of the plane with uh, we called it the loser club so we were sitting down with Charles, with George, with Esteban, with myself um having a couple of drinks together and crying over a pretty difficult afternoon for all of us but listen to this we can learn a lot from this guy about bouncing back in style red bull sent him to japan for a year early in his career but he didn't speak any japanese and only one guy in the team there spoke english there was obviously a lot of misunderstanding so he did two things he started writing everything down and he got very hands-on in the technical side would you take a french lesson from him Bonjour. C'est Pierre Gasly, bienvenue au cours de français où vous trouverez peut-être des phrases utiles pour le Grand Prix de France. Nice. You're learning a language, take his advice. He says, listen to music, listen first thing when you wake up and function through your emotions. And I know winning isn't everything, but let's see if you can try here. See how fast you can click these three starting lights, otherwise known as like, subscribe and notification bell. Give it a try. Yo les pido que lo disfruten, eh, que, que estén ahí a tope conmigo como, como lo están siempre y, y estoy seguro que lo notaré. This guy is an absolute racing fanatic with over 100 Grand Prix races to his name. He started learning at age 10 because his dad had <laughs> his dad had an indoor karting circuit. I mean, some people have all the luck. Huh? As for the nickname, I heard he also has another one. Smooth operator. Smooth. Operator. The smooth operator is Carlos Sainz, a Spanish driver from Madrid and the son of a two-time world rally champion. Also, his full name is crazy long. Carlos Sainz, Vázquez de Castro, Cenamor, Rincón, Rebollo, Virto, Moreno, Garanda, Don Perú, Riva, Goitia, Pérez del Pú. So obviously his native language is Spanish. He used to be very shy and get pushed around, but he learned a valuable lesson from his dad who said, be the hunter, not the prey. And when he hunted English, it was at the British Council School. When you're 12, 13, you're a bit like the boy of the rap. You see, you're, just, <laughs> yeah. you're just there having a laugh, you know, fun. Oh yeah, great, Michael Schumacher. Yeah, but I, it was later when I realized how lucky I was to have met him. Wonderful. What else can he speak? Did I mention that he grew up in Italy? You know, that, uh, what's it called, Fer- 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 Ferrari? Italian, English, and, Sp- and Spanish, and he thinks he can speak Italian, but he actually- And Korean, Korean. you're forgetting Korean. It's hard to tell when these guys are joking and when they're not, so let's decide for ourselves just how good he is. Hola, aereo alle sette e mezza di Bologna. Quindi, facciamo una foto, ma dammi una mano, per favore, perché devo arrivare. Sette e mezza. Oh, he definitely speaks Italian. Sounds pretty natural, huh? It probably helped that he lived alongside Italians for three years years at Toro Rosso. But I wonder who he's giving a Spanish lesson to here. It's under, there will be 66 laps. Esto domen, do, domingo? Si, este, este. You know who that is? Right, what do you say we get those revs up? Three languages just isn't enough. Nou, bepaalde dieren vind ik uh, toch, ja, als je ergens in een kelder gaat en ineens een grote spin, uh, ja, dat vind ik helemaal niks. What language is this? I bet you know. He was Formula One's youngest ever competitor. Started at only 17 years old. By 2020, he was arguably the second best driver on the grid. And apart from his native Dutch, he speaks another language we haven't heard yet. Yuki wa bokiyori hayai. Perfect. Okay, maybe not uh, Japanese. There's another hard language he's going to try out in just a minute. It's a bit of a theme with these guys. Max Verstappen comes from the Netherlands, and so naturally he's also pretty good at English too. Although he's not crazy about his English nickname, so they've changed it to Super Max. I like it. You know, I had always the support of my mom. She she came to races, and she still. I mean, I don't know today how she survived, but. Because normally all the other races already, she gets really nervous. His dad is a Dutch former Formula One driver and his Belgian mum competed in karting. Good lineage there. He was born in Belgium and lived near the border, but he says he feels more Dutch than Belgian. Where can I park my motorhome? Where can I park my camper? 
Why come ik mijn camper parkeer? Why can I my camper parkeer it? Ah, we forgot to add Dutch for those two. Max learned German while karting with none other than Michael Schumacher. Want to see if he's any good? Yeah, I think we pay a lot of millions to Renault for a good motor normally, but... Yeah, this is natuurlijk totaal scheisse. These racers are having quite the life, aren't they? I've never seen a bunch of less stressed out looking guys. There's one more language Max can speak, I think. Bonjour, mon prénom est Max. Uh, beaucoup, on m'a beaucoup... Demandé. Demandé. Cette question aujourd'hui. Cette question aujourd'hui. Voulez-vous coucher avec moi? <laughs> <laughs> Something else, just in... Whatever could it be? Prospect Nevtyanikov. Prospect... Neftyanikov. Prospect Neftyanikov. No. Russian, hey, he's, he's trying. How many points should we give these guys for trying to learn lines in their teammates' languages? Well, I hope you can smell the rubber burning. Here comes your SD. What we see, the étincelles, it's true. Déjà, c'est la première chose, parce que les voitures sont très basses, en fait, toutes les monoplaces. Et en dessous, il y a des patins, en fait, en fer pour justement euh, pas endommager, du coup, euh, ce qui est euh, la partie vitale de la voiture, qui est le moteur. This guy has a fantastic rags to riches story. He loved Schumacher and all he ever wanted to be was a racer. He was born in Normandy, in France. Dad's family it was from Malaga, in Spain. He's also of Algerian descent, and now he lives in Switzerland. I can hear the languages ringing already. Well, I was quite good at uh, motocross when I was younger. Um... I mean, in my garden. <laughs> so, so I... Esteban Ocon competes under the French flag in Formula One, and there's no shortage of love coming his way. It's a great nickname. Well, thank you. Well, uh, a lot of people call me like that, so now I know. Like, Esteban, Esteban, he was everywhere. <laughs> Listen to this story. His dad had to work crazy hours just to support the family, and their house was even sold to keep him racing. And they all went to live in a caravan. How's that for commitment? They drove all over Europe in this caravan, dog included, so that he could participate in karting competitions. His mum used to tutor him and he speaks now is it four languages okay donc je parle français parlo italiano i speak english y espanol también so four languages is he the best of the lot well we'll have to see you know it's very hard to fit in when you are the poor kid among racers who mostly come from extreme privilege different mentality required for that hola a todos hola a todos los mexicanos nos vemos la uh, próxima semana uh, entonces sí he learned Spanish from his Spanish grandparents and English during his time in F1. He then dated an Italian model for five years, which will probably do the trick. Ci vediamo presto all'autodromo di Imola per il Gran Premio Emilia Romagna. Gran Premio Emilia Romagna all'autodromo. L'autodromo. His nickname suits him. What do you think? I'm an idiot. Throughout. I still speak English, you know. What are you trying to achieve? <laughs> One year. Since uh, since my victory, and uh, yeah, time goes by quite quickly. Yeah. Uh, I tell you. Who is next? Ah, a Monegasque wonder boy. Oh, no, no, I don't know. Stop. I don't know. Oh, come on. Oh my God, we are going to crush. He's so good. In Italy, they call him the predestined. After all, when he joined Ferrari in 2019. He won his first race. He also goes by Lord Percival, if you ask his partner in crime. So, Lord-esque. Yeah, You're Lord I... Percival. Yeah. <laughs> Charles Leclerc was born in Monte Carlo in Monaco, where many F1 drivers live. In Monaco, they speak French, of course. Mais uh, c'était juste incroyable de voir uh, toute la ligne droite qui était uh, remplie de personnes et toutes ces personnes surtout en rouge. I couldn't find out if he also speaks Monégasque. Anybody know? Let me know in the comments. But being born in Monaco certainly doesn't hurt if you like other languages. Starting with the obvious, Italian. La mia ragazza ha dovuto fare il l'abbonamento a Twitch perché non poteva parlare perché c'è solo sub per parlare e per avere per poter parlarmi. E così l'ho aperta. He spent 80% of his youth in Italy for kart races and he said that he learned Italian because his kart mechanics were talking in Italian and he made the effort to learn it, just like that. But he definitely needed help with one language in particular, the essential one, and this is where his team had to help him. English is hard. The biggest problem we have at the moment is that we have a very good car 
when we are in very specific conditions, but whenever you get out a little bit of the window, then the car is losing a lot of performance. If you're learning English on the fly, it probably helps quite a lot if everyone around you is also desperate for you to learn. Well, we've heard him screaming in despair in Italian, interviewing in French, chatting over the radio in English. What else can he speak? Hola a todos. Hoy yo hablo español muy bien. Um, muchas gracias por los apoyo. Ah, he's going to be fluent in Spanish by next month. Don't you worry. If there's anything we can learn from these guys, is how to make languages fun. San. Sole. Sol. Le. Sol. Le sol. Time for a quick pit stop. If you fancy learning a language in a fun way, just like all these guys, but you haven't been chosen by Ferrari yet, yet, don't worry, here at Story Learning, we teach most of these languages you're hearing today. But is it fun? Yes, it is fun because we do it with stories. That's right, we teach languages through stories, which is a whole new way of learning languages that we've helped over 10,000 students use to learn a new language. Now, it works because when you learn a language through stories, not rules, the language just sticks in your head more easily, which means you learn faster and with a lot less stress. If you would like to see how it works, then you can get a free tour of the story learning method. Just look in the video description below, you'll see a link for my story learning kit. There's a link to click there and it will take you to the right place. Next up, the craziest kind of joyride. Normalmente se nos suele dar mejor los domingos que los sábados, eh, pero bueno, sabemos que, que ha sido un fin de semana particularmente raro para nosotros, muy difícil, demasiado lento, sobre todo en la crono. He's a Spanish driver from Asturias, and I have it on good authority that everybody loves him. What was that? It's a song especially for him. Spanish people call him El Nano, and that's what they're singing. Fernando Alonso is a world champion and he has a reputation. Only life or death matters to him. Fernando has embraced the spirit of the samurai and he gets all fired up from the Bushido code of Japan's ancient warriors. He said something pretty cool once. He said, I think a racing driver and samurai are very linked. Discipline, self-confidence, no fear. We fight for only one goal, which is to lose, uh, to win. It was good. A little bit of uh, help from Michael to stop Luis in the in the majority of the race, but uh, it was good to taste the podium again here in Mons. He's mentioned watching American TV series and movies to help him improve his English too. I must say, I hear this a lot from native Spanish speakers. As for his other nickname, Magic Alonso, well... The seven of hearts is down. So on top, we will have the eight of hearts. Wait, no, there is the seven. Oh, yeah. So in the middle, what do we have? The eight of hearts? Yeah, of course. Is the seven. I wonder if his French is better than his card tricks. Let's find out. It's very good. I think it's a village that you know, and that a lot of people come here for vacation, for vacation, with the family, with the fiancé, with the family. Paris is special. You've got to love the way he makes French sound very Spanish. Great job. But we're not done with him yet. In quasi tutti i tipi di circuiti, quindi questa è una caratteristica molto buona che ci ha permesso di, di lottare per il mondiale. Per noi è una, è una priorità anche per il 2011 l'aerodinamica. Amazing! Alonso was already fluent in Italian before Ferrari signed him. Not surprising, Italian is the second official language in Monaco. Here's a great message from Magic Alonso for you. Right guys, we're about to shift into overdrive. Here comes one of the brainiest racers to ever show up at F1. Je me rappelle des souvenirs, j'avais 4 ans, Senna qui passait dans le tunnel et tout ça. Et maintenant de le faire moi-même, c'est vraiment top. When he became the world champion in 2016, he was a young blonde with luscious hair, as Nordic as they come. And so the nickname was a fair one. Happy birthday, dear Britney. Britney. <laughs> He's got the hair, plus he's crazy talented. Britney doesn't race anymore, but when you hear him speak, I'm sure you're going to agree that he deserves to be in this list. Yeah, the visit today by AMG was very special, of course. AMG was my first sponsor in the car sport. When I was 12 years old, I had already AMG on my shirt, on my helm. So I have a very special connection to the company. Here's Nico Rosberg, and he was the 2016 world champion. He chose to quit Formula One while he was at his peak. Brave decision. He's half Finnish, half German, and was raised in Monaco and Ibiza. So, what languages do you think he speaks? Sul serio, non so. Sicuramente sarà molto vicino. 
tra tanti piloti perché penso che tutti quanti anche un po' più indietro come Yarno. He's also fluent in English. I've seen journalists describe him as so articulate that he speaks with Germanic precision. <laughs> Whatever that means. Well, Sebastian had a great start, and uh, and I had a decent one, and Lewis had a really bad one, and and I was where my position was on the outside there, you know. And in Barcelona, I gave it a go around the outside of Lewis, and it worked out really well. You counting his languages? We got French, German, Italian, English. Anything else? Well, funny thing is, even though he's half Finnish, he never learned Finnish. Why? Well, you'll have to ask him. But we are not done. He got a fantastic education and was taught. Yep, five languages. Hola, hoy el video blog en español porque aquí. Tenía mucha gente que habla español y sí, un fin de semana muy difícil porque en la calificación tenía los neumáticos fríos. And there we go, it's Spanish and no fun and games in sight. He's a true polyglot and he believes in reading a lot. I approve. Good job. Quite interesting that he seems to be the only one here who got his entire language education the formal way. His reputation is that he is so good at languages that when he speaks one, he becomes you know, a Frenchman, an Italian, a Spaniard, the hand gestures, the facial expressions, the works. Well, I don't know if any polyglot racer can impress more than Rosberg, but someone once said, if everything seems under control, well, you're not going fast enough. Ja, ich denke, es ist immer mal mehr, mal weniger hektisch, aber es ist natürlich immer viel los. Uh, aktuell ist eher mehr los. This racer's curious nickname has a simple story. It comes from his one finger salute on the podium. His mother tongue is German, but anything sound different to you? Der Tisch ist uh, mit Leckerei gespitzt. Also, das ist bloß, uh, das sind nur, nur gute Sachen. Here he's speaking in his local dialect, Hessian. But wait till you hear the next language he speaks. Olli Hüber Beiber. Uh, Amazing. And Sebastian Vettel speaks Finnish because, well, let's see, when he was racing for Red Bull, he had a Finnish physiotherapist. His current physio is also Finnish. One of his teammates tutored him in Finnish. I mean, you work with a guy for four years and uh, you pick up his language, right? Well, not necessarily, but he did. Also, he spent a ton of time living in his villa in, you guessed it, Finland. He even describes himself as an almost Finnish man. It was difficult for us this weekend. Congratulations to Charles for the podium. Mais je pense que c'était le maximum uh, pour nous aujourd'hui. If anyone know where Vettel learned French, please let me know in the comments. I'm guessing he picked it up especially to talk to these two. And then there was Ferrari. Mercedes è uh, stato molto forte per noi. Penso due giri in Q3 per me uh, sono andat, andata bene. And we still have a question to answer about Ferrari. Do you have to speak Italian to work for them? Well, the thing is, the racers work with an Italian crew every single day, so it's extremely helpful if they can speak Italian. But F1 operates in English as the main language, so above all, you have to be fluent in English. You could say the same thing for to any athlete or any sportsman that has sacrificed his or her childhood. Uh, to become professional and to achieve something in their sports. It's a rule that all communication over the radio must be in English, and Ferrari are not allowed to speak in Italian over the radio. And in case you haven't guessed yet who is singing on that track... Seriously, how on earth do you sing when you're... How fast do these cars go? There are jokes that he can swear in 30 languages, and I believe it actually, but sorry, jokes don't count, which means Sebastian speaks five languages, as far as we know. He also holds the record for youngest world champion in F1, which is something, right? Yeah, it's, it's something. We're almost at the finish line, and someone has to win. Is it Vettel? Is it Rosberg? Brace yourselves for the one who speaks the most languages of all. Plot twist incoming. <laughs> And the biggest Formula One polyglot of all is not actually a racer, he's a boss, a billionaire boss and possibly the greatest F1 team boss in history, and he can do this. Il te vient mais que sostenait de l'UNHCA, l'Agence des Nations Unies pour les réfugiés, das internationale Maßnahmen zum Schutz aller Menschen anführt, Michon et Dolcetsky. Whoever, wherever, whenever. Okay, hold on a minute. One language at a time, please. We get that you're good, but we've got to count here. Nie jest tak 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 super dla niego w Saudi Arabia. Też w ostatnim roku miał te problemy. A zobaczymy. Ja myślę, że będzie lepiej. That's Polish. He's speaking. You knew that. 
right? And he's none other than Toto Wolff, the team Mercedes boss. Toto is a legend in F1. He's Polish-Romanian, but grew up in Austria, where they speak German. Immer unsere Einstellung. Man muss, wir bezeichnen das als ähm, Glas halb leer Typen, nicht halb voll. So are these two, no, three of his languages? Not quite. He doesn't speak Romanian. His dad was Romanian, but he lost him when he was a young boy. The language of their house in Vienna was Polish, and his mum sent him to a French private school in Vienna. C'était clair que si tu as un accident dans le premier tour et tu te retrouves à 40 secondes du dernier, c'est Très difficile de contenir la course. Toto had an extremely difficult start to life and he blames his urge to control catastrophe on the unraveling of his bourgeois childhood. But somewhere he fits Italian lessons in. Ciao, per noi ogni membro della squadra è importante. Per questo cerchiamo il miglior fan. Si pensi di essere tu, dimostralo. Participa a Best and Bay Fan. He started out as a racer, but he was unfortunately too tall, and so he worked his boss magic. Because of him, Mercedes is famous for their no blame culture. You mess up, you take responsibility. I like that. And if it's how he learned languages, no wonder he's so confident. Hi, my name is Toto Wolf. I'm the team principal and CEO of the Mercedes AMG Petronas Formula One team. The man has won eight constructor titles, an unprecedented amount. Status King. Altogether, Toto Wolff speaks six languages. Unfortunately, proof of the last one is not easy to find on YouTube, but everyone says he speaks Spanish just fine, and to be honest with you, I believe it. Hasta la vista, baby. Now, if you think I've left out any driver who speaks a lot of languages, let me know in the comments. I don't want to miss anybody out. But after that, you should check out this video, which we've chosen especially for you. Capiche?